Good morning, I'm Matt and welcome to part one of this little mini build series. Uh, now, the reason why I'm making this video is because I have personally struggled with the instructions for the uh, ME109 Fun Fighter. Uh, and the, the reason why I've struggled a little bit is that number one, I have like zero build history with uh, Balsa uh, models and there's been a few things which I've slipped up upon. Uh, and it's just a record for me keeping this and again if you go on and build one of these is that I hope the uh, closer images are going to help you with yours and I think that's a that's a big one. While the instructions are over here are, are pretty good, let's not knock them too much, they are very very good. Let me just put it up on the screen but it is very difficult at times to see on the print that there's actually a piece of wood on that leading edge. You don't actually see it. Also, uh, I've struggled on a couple of other parts and I'm frankly, I'm a little bit concerned about the wings because while the instructions are good, the pictures, I am struggling with a lot. And I don't know, I'm, I'm putting this right up to the camera uh, so that you can see, and maybe that'll help me to see that on a bigger screen. But uh, uh, here in real life, uh, it's quite difficult to see what the smeg is going on. So, like I said, I have struggled a bit. I did make one proper screw up. I put a part in upside down because it is not obvious uh, on the plans at all which way certain things need to be up. Okay, again, not no, I've never building a model like this before myself, uh, and not really seeing uh, like a built structure. I've managed to pin that to the desk, that's always a good sign. Uh, not building a structure like this before, I've got no I real idea of what it should look like and how the finished project project looks like as a skeleton. So uh, with that said, I'll tell you what, let's, let's start with the fuselage. Now, um, they have included an updated motor mount, which is very, very simple. In fact, rather than me sticking it up to the camera, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in right into the desk and we'll look at some specific features. Uh, so. This front piece here, uh, it was, it's just uh, CNC plywood, really nice fit. I've just used, and there's the glue which I'm using, Gorilla White Wood Glue. I think it's about 10 quid a tube, but it's absolutely brilliant, and it does dry very quickly. Uh, I've used this in construction projects, uh, and it has worked out really, really well. Oh, well, put it this way, the desk which we're working on hasn't fallen apart. It's held together with this stuff, so uh, of course a couple of screws and whatnot. Uh, anyway, uh, the the theme is is that all the way along this bottom edge. So we're looking at the bottom. You can tell the bottom by this arc here. Uh, and one tool which you will categorically need uh, is a set square. Okay. Uh, and the reason why you need a set square is because if I zoom out a second second is that when you have this down around your plan you'll need to mark up where these things to go and instead of guessing them actually you can see the pencil line there is there use your set square and then you know these things are square and the same is that when you put these parts in uh, together is that you know that they are in uh, square and that's a big one for me as I do have a slight woodworking history but that that said is it yeah, it's been fun putting it straight in here so far. Uh, so a set square is definitely a required tool for this. Uh, the theme so far is to uh, make the structure more rigid by including and cutting up uh, the 5mm by 5mm uh, bowl supply wood. Now, to be perfectly honest, they, 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 have, they did include two long lengths of that, the 5mm by 5mm, but I'll be honest with you, I, I would have liked some more, and the reason why I would have liked some more uh, is because uh, it would have been nice to put some extra supports down here on the back, and also we've got two more ribs to put in here, and here you'll notice the lines there, and again, of course, I've used a set square for those, uh, and you put this along the bottom, and then this goes together, and you sand off the points, and uh, we could have done with a little bit more, so what I've got here somewhere uh, is just some off-cut uh, balsa from other models, which I've used to, to make surfaces out, and I'll make some of my own pieces uh, just as extra supports. And again, it's, it's my model, I'm gonna put extra supports in it. So, hey ho. Uh, the bit which I really did screw up upon, and again, it's down to lack of instructions on here and uh, not being able to see it in the instructions, is uh, when you put in part number two, okay, that's part number two near the front, it needs to be that way up, not the other way up, 
okay because when you look at this you think oh there's going to be hoops all the way on the top so maybe you need that up the other way to make a hoop to go towards the nose actually no the, that that one goes that way round and the reason why that one goes that way round uh, is because that's where your battery bay or battery sits in there uh, so yeah, but I was looking at it and I was going, that doesn't look right, uh, checking it and um, yeah, I, I had to make an executive decision that I'd done it wrong uh, and then turn it around that way, uh, so it's that, it's, it's that way around, which I believe is the correct way. Hey ho, we'll soon find out. Uh, where am I now? I've just been including some more 5mm strip all the way up to the tail uh, and once that's dried uh, I will put the ribs in. Uh, and I will, and I also need to sand up these uh, two inner parts up to a point so these two pieces squeeze together uh, at the end. Now I can see that they do need to come flush at the very end because of the other part of the drawing which is down there. So that's the progress on the fuselage so far. It has not been event free uh, so far from what looks like comprehensive plans actually you're missing a different dimension and while they on elsewhere on if I zoom out a second uh, elsewhere on the plans they do include like some fascia plates over here uh, it's not completely obvious again that's maybe just because I'm a novice at reading plans like this but I can tell you that there's no plan or no picture which tells you that that piece needs to be that way up because when you look at on here that does continue on upwards all the way up to the top but that piece doesn't go all the way up to the top. Uh, so that is a bit, a bit peculiar, uh, to be honest. Hey ho. Uh, let's move on and talk about the wings. Now, I did these yesterday. Uh, again, I did struggle a little bit. The, uh, and the reason perhaps why I struggled a little bit is because pretty much all the parts are uh, numbered, whereas the, these parts are not numbered. Uh, and uh, the well, wings are pretty obvious, aren't they? Uh, but the leading edge piece is not completely obvious to, to a complete novice uh, as were the, the rear of the, the training edge uh, was not obvious. Now I've been glued that on uh, with some Yoohoo piss paw. Uh, it seems to have worked, it's not fallen off. Uh, big heads up, uh, do not use Yoohoo power. I did quickly test that on a bit of foam over there and it melted a great big hole in the polystyrene so do go careful with that. Uh, only Yoohoo paw seems to be good enough and again I'm sure that PVA Type style glue would be fine for it as well. Of course, epoxy would also be alright too. Uh, and I've glued those on. Now, you need to do something funky, and I am struggling a bit here. And again, I'm 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 more than willing to admit that I struggle at times. And I think on the end here, you do get these two bits of wood. Again, I'll put that up now. You get these two lovely fashioned pieces of wood which are down here. There we go. Uh, item 22. Uh, lovely fashioned piece on the wood on the end and I think what we need to do again it's a little bit tricky because the instructions are not that clear uh, visually uh, on there is that we need to put cut that off uh, and put that on the ends and then that defines the profile of what you're supposed to be standing to and you'll see that's got a nice rounded edge whereas that's quite square-ish uh, and yeah, I, I need to do that today. So that's going to be a bit of a leap of faith, to be frankly honest. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> it's not entirely clear what the smeg needs to go on. And then I don't really know what the, whatever I'm supposed to be doing in that stage, to be honest. So I might go on the Googler in a bit and see if I can find some what somebody else has been and done for theirs. Because this bit is a bit weird. Also... Uh, when it comes to the uh, ailerons uh, in the, by the looks of it, it's a single servo. So whereas me and you are probably used to be put, fitting a servo in the wing and having a uh, and then servo leads going through, I was like, where, where did the servo leads go? No, in this case, it looks like what I've seen on some of the uh, other models where you have a servo mounted, say, here, uh, and then two arms which then lever down here to then move the surfaces up in the wing. I'm not that confident, that's the word which I'm looking for, uh, about that at the moment. I definitely need to go, like I said, I need to go and do my research on the intervals uh, because uh, there, there's some cutting in here and again the pictures are not that fantastic. 
uh, on there and I am struggling a bit and I, I, I'm very unsure of Helm Pat so I need to go and do my research on that. Uh, I think probably one of the best things I could do uh, is contact uh, these guys, cambrianplanes.co.uk and ask for the full size photograph so I can actually see what's going on. These are great if you are a more experienced builder but I'm a, I'm a novice builder uh, and I've never made something like that and put the the, the yeah, uh, so I think that's my, probably my best uh, approach here is because the instructions are probably good enough for an experienced builder. I'm not, so I'm struggling. So that's the progress so far. We have some wings with some wood glued on them. Uh, to be honest, I probably I use you port. It was fine for it, but to be honest, actually in hindsight, I should have just used some Gorilla Glue to do that. Uh, the fuselage is coming along. I'm quite impressed with my progress so far. Uh, everything is square, that's always a bonus. Now the wood does bow, it's a bit flimsy and it wasn't particularly flat when it arrived here. Uh, it's still not particularly flat but uh, gluing it down, weighing it down has managed to straighten it up and I'm looking at it by eye and uh, either side of the fuselage is fine. These bits will kind of sort themselves out later uh, once we get them sorted. And uh, Yeah, it'll be fun. I've, I found the two bits which I need next. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm guessing these holes here are for the snakes, the, the plastic tubes to go up through uh, for the elevator and rudder. One of those will go in there and then there's a little doodah down to go at the end as well. Uh, but I'm not going to put that in until uh, these two bottom pieces have finished drying. Uh, and that should take another 10 minutes or so. Once that's dried off, uh, I'll cut them down, sand them down, that, to that section down here. These two very end pieces uh, to form a V so they, they come together as tightly as possible. Uh, glue them up, pin them up. Uh, I have been using little clamps. These have been absolutely fantastic for this so far. Uh, I've also been using some bigger clamps as well. Uh, so yeah. Ooh, something's kicked off there in the background. Apologies for that. I have no idea which one it is. Alright, apologies for that, that was the laptop kicking on in the background. I leave that in, it just makes it easier for Edison for me, so apologies for that. Uh, yeah, take away, clamps, need lots of clamps. Uh, small ones like this, big ones like that. Uh, and also I've got some Irvine, or is it Irvine? Yeah, Irwin, should I say, clamps like that. Those came in really, really useful uh, for holding the fuselage together as well. So a uh, collection of mine would smaller lighter woodworking tools have been very very useful. Uh, anyway as you may have just noticed it started raining here in the United Kingdom of wetness. Uh, proper true build weather <laughs> to say the least. So this is uh, build log number one. Uh, I've got so far and I'm not feeling very confident at all. Well I'm feeling quite confident with the fuselage. I am not feeling confident with the wings at all. So first thing which I'll be doing this morning uh, when I get on the back on the computer in a minute uh, is getting in contact with these guys and saying look if you've got the original photographs which you've used in here because it's not completely obvious uh, what the smeg uh, is going on in here which again it probably looks really big to you because I'm putting that right up on the camera uh, but if you do that right to your eye not great. Um, so yeah <laughs> I'm feeling a bit 50-50 at the moment. So yeah, build log number one, over and out. For myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or queries about the build so far, please just ask in the comments section underneath this video. And I'm off because I need to go and do some work. Anyway, for myself, Matt, cheerios!